Um, okay, this part is gonna be in English, and we thought it's very important today that we are gathering here to also send a very clear message to the Iranian government. Today we gathered here in front of the U.S. Embassy to remind both candidates and the U.S. electorate that these are our lives that they are using as political fodder for their campaigns. We are opposing this new imperialism in the form of illegitimate inter intervention of foreign powers in the future of our countries and societies. We also find it mandatory to send a message to the ruling regime of Iran to remind them once more that we are more than ever opposing the warmongering foreign policy and their totalitarian repression and the terror inside the country. If the Iranian ruling class has ever thought that they can succeed in forming alliances with the anti-war, anti-sanction movement, they should know that here is not the place they should look for their friends and allies. In fact, a large segment of society inside Iran and outside Iran see this struggle against the regime and the opposition to war and sanctions as inseparable parts of the same combat. Shortly after the revolution in 1979, the Iran-Iraq war broke out, which helped the Islamist regime that had hijacked the revolution and turned it to a theocratic dictatorship to stabilize the rule and massacre the opposition. Eight years of war gave enough time to the regime to, mar to mark any opposition force as the traitor to the nation and accomplice to, a, to the enemy. This is why we should do whatever we could to prevent the history to repeat itself and those years to come back. On the other hand, economic sanctions have helped the regime to cover up years of inefficient and corrupt economy, the sinister neoliberalization and militarized privatization. Under the cover of stabilizing the rate of currency in Iran, the military forces have an everyday presence on the streets and in bazaars. Blockade of the normal trading routes has made it possible for the Revolutionary Guard of Iran to form a mafia that leads the black markets and makes astronomical benefits. And the ruins left from the Gulf War and the crippling crippling economic sanctions, the dictators of Iran are building their economic empire. The sanctions have already provided the state of emergency for the government, a condition when one should remain silent in the face of a greater danger. At this very moment, nine female political prisoners have launched a hunger strike in Evin prison. Due to a recent attack of the female ward by uh, the prison guard, leading to the harassment and defamation of female political prisoners. These kind of atrocities are not unprecedented. Similar cases have happened after the popular uprising of 2009. The difference being that at that time people were on the street and they fought against the, uh, the regime. The harassments of such a scale would ignite in those times a huge demonstration and widespread opposition. Under the state of emergency created by the crippling sanctions, however, the repression has increased while the opposition's strength has decreased so much that even the demonstration in solidarity with the prisoners seems an impossible task. This is why here and today we announce that our opposition to war and sanction is an inseparable an integral part of our fight against the totalitarian regime of Iran. We want to voice this louder than ever, not in my name, neither war nor sanction, and not Iran's state oppression. Thank you. So, thank you everybody, thank you Ale. Uh, we are not allowed actually um, to be in front of Bundestag, so we finish um, our demonstration, our kungebung, our gathering here, and thank you everybody. We just finish it to say Nein zum Krieg, Nein zu den Sanktionen, Nein zum Krieg, Nein zu den Sanktionen, Nein zum Krieg, Nein zu den Sanktionen.